Welcome everyone to a new tutorial series about WordPress. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to set up a local development environment and run WordPress on our computer. This video is specific to macOS, but if you're running Windows or Linux, you can find similar videos for those two platforms in the description below. We're also going to take a look at the WP CLI, which is the common line tool for WordPress, which streamlines a lot of the steps needed to maintain a WordPress installation. In order to use it and consequentially to use WordPress, we need to install PHP, a web server like Apache or NGNX, and a database like MySQL or MariaDB. Let's install PHP via brew, which will automatically pull the most updated package and configure it for us. If you don't have homebrew on macOS, I strongly recommend installing it. In order to properly get a local PHP server on our machine and run WordPress like if it was on a live website, I really like to use Laravel Valet. This tool is very simple and it comes with all the goodness needed to have an easy to manage local development environment. Let's install it. Valet is available via Composer package, so we need to install Composer, which is also based on PHP. Let's go to the official Composer website and follow the instructions, which will make us download and run the composer-setup.php file, and then move the newly created Composer executable into our local bin so we can easily run it from anywhere. Now we can download the Valet package from Composer and make it globally available in our system. If you try to run Valet install, this might not work at first because our terminal can't find this newly installed package. This is due to the fact that we currently don't have the Composer packages folder added to our user path. If you're confused by all of this, check the video in my description on how to set up ZSH and manage your bash or ZSH profile. In my case, I will need to access the .zshrc file and add the folder path where Composer is installing packages into my profile path. In my case, it is the .composer slash vendor slash bin. After doing that, remember to restart your terminal to pick up the new changes. Now we can run the volley install command, which will install the nginx server, php fpm, and dns mask. Great. Now let's create the folder where we're planning to install and code our WordPress website. In my case, it's going to be sites slash alicad. So I'm going to access the sites folder, create the alicad subfolder, and then use the command valet park to tell valet that from within the sites folder, every other subfolder will need to be served as a real website with the extension .test. To test this, I'm going to quickly create an index.php file inside my alicat folder and call the php info function to make sure everything is working correctly. Remember that if you only have PHP code in your file and nothing else, you can ignore the closing tag as it will be automatically closed at the end of the file. Now let's open a browser tab and type your folder name, in my case alicad.test. Nice! We now have our PHP information printed correctly. Now, in order to run WordPress locally, we need a database. In my case, I'm going to install MariaDB, once again using brew with the command brew install MariaDB. After that, we can launch it with the mysql.server start command. Now simply type MariaDB to connect to the server. Here, we can use simple SQL queries to view and modify our databases. If we type show databases, semicolon at the end, we will get a list of databases currently available. Let's create a new database called WordPress so we can use it for our website. Let's type create database and then the name of the database. Remember to not make my same mistake as we don't need to add any double quotes around the name of the database. Now let's create a simple user for this new database so we can create some credentials to allow WordPress to consume this database. I'm going to keep things simple and create a user called WordPress that points to my local hosts, which is where my MariaDB database lives, and give it a password of password. Easy. Let's grant all the privileges of our previously created WordPress database to our newly created WordPress user and then flush the privileges to ensure that our MariaDB is aware of the changes. 
I know these steps might sound a little bit confusing, but if you want to learn a little bit more about databases, as usual, I have another video for you in the description below. Now it's time to install the WordPress command line tool. Let's access the official WP CLI website and follow the installation instructions. We're going to use curl to download the package, make it executable, and then moving it into our local bin so we can call it from anywhere. Now let's move back into our local folder, in my case, sites slash alicad, and delete that leftover index.php file, which we won't need anymore. First, let's download the current WordPress core with the WP core download command. Now that we have these files, let's open this folder in our favorite code editor, in my case, VS Code, and rename the WP config sample.php file. Remove the dash sample part and edit a few parameters inside this file. Add the name, password, and username of our database that we previously created with MariaDB. Then, at the bottom of the file, let's set the WP underscore debug constant to true, so all the debug errors and warnings will be printed on the page. Save and close this file. After that, we can install it with the WP core install command and specify a bunch of needed attributes, a URL, a title, an admin user and password, and an admin email. All of these can be very simple and not real, like the email address or password, because we're installing WordPress locally, so there's no security issue. In the future, we're going to see how to export our database and publish it on a live server with a real username and password and a correct configuration. But for now, this is enough for our local development. Let's press enter, and that's it. If we access our local website URL, we should see a newly installed WordPress running properly. Let's add to the URL the forward slash wp-login.php and enter the username and password that we defined during our wp-cli install command. You should be able to find yourself inside the administration dashboard of WordPress. Great. Well, that's pretty much it for this lesson. From next one, we will see how to create a theme from scratch. And throughout the series, we will see how to create custom functions, custom types, custom blocks, attributes, and develop some very simple plugins. Make sure to subscribe to not miss any lessons. Thank you for watching and happy coding.